Heaven help us, says journalist Mike Baker for The New York Times upon realizing that a judge wants to institute some kind of ruling where the ACLU, a far left advocacy organization, would determine who is a real journalist and who isn't. Now, the ACLU used to be pretty awesome. They used to defend free speech. They were the American Civil Liberties Union. But they realized the money was so much sweeter if they bent the knee. And now they're the anti-Civil Liberties Union, and they actually advocate against civil rights. I'm not exaggerating at all. There have been several high-profile cases, notably with schools discriminating against people based on their race. The ACLU is in favor of things like this under the guise of supporting civil liberties by allowing institutions to discriminate against people for their immutable characteristics. That's not civil liberties. That's the opposite. Well, you see, over in Portland, there have been clashes with the police and some journalists were outraged. Why were the police pushing me around? I am but a humble reporter. Now, with all due respect, Mike Baker does a pretty good job, at least from the work of his that I've seen. He's reported on the ground and given us some raw footage, some straight shooting reporting, and I respect it. So I feel bad that he's now freaking out. He's realizing just how bad it's going to be. Take a look at this tweet. He says, heaven help us, quote, we could redefine journalist to someone who is authorized by the ACLU. U.S. District Judge Michael Simon said the ACLU could maintain a list of who they are giving vest to and give them appropriate guidance and instructions. Ooh, I love it. First, they came for. I tell you what, do you have any idea what it's going to be like for all these journalists living under the boot of a far left organization? You're going to show up in a place like Portland and be like, hi, ACLU. Can I have a vest? I'm a reporter. Who do you work for? I write for the New York Times. Uh huh. And can you show me some of your work? Here's an article I have criticizing the riots. Yeah, you're not a journalist. You're a far right agitator. No vest for you. And then when they go out, they're not real press. You see, this all has to do with the fact that Antifa has been declaring themselves journalists and medics and the police can't tell the difference. So the police see a dude claiming to be a journalist and they're like, I don't care who you say you are because that guy's claiming to be the same thing, but he's flying an Antifa flag. Well, this is the judge. This is the idea being floated and journalists are starting to freak out. We got this tweet from Mike Baker and several responses. This guy says he doesn't think it's a good idea, but he does like the judge. Another guy says, good God, what a dumb effing idea. It's beyond dumb. It is it is the one of the most extremely one of the most one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. But I'll tell you what, man, these far left journalists that have infiltrated these news organizations are laughing and cheering. This is a giant spike in the back of what was left of journalism. And there was very little left, to be honest. It is a withered husk, a dying old man crawling on the ground. And the ACLU walked up and the judge placed the spike on his back and the ACLU drove it in with a sledgehammer. And here we are. You will have to get permission from far left extremists to report. But let's read the story and see what's really going on, because maybe we're not. It's not that bad yet. I also want to point out, however, in this judge's story, we have uh, in the story about the judge, we have this judge proposes numbered jerseys for federal agents in Portland. Court may make law enforcement officers grappling with protests wear unique codes. What? I kid you not. This judge, I'm sorry, man. It sounds like he has no idea what's really going on. But let's see why the journalists are so upset first. Courthouse News says, who's a journalist in Portland? Judge says the ACLU might decide. The American Civil Liberties Union, Civil Liberties Union may be the arbiter of who is and isn't a journalist at Portland protests, with a federal judge floating the idea of requiring journalists to be identified by the organization's blue vests in order to avoid assault or arrest by federal agents under the court's temporary restraining order. U.S. District Judge Michael Simon said in a hearing Friday that the move might be a solution to claims from the Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Marshals that his restraining order is unworkable because, according to his agencies, some protesters are falsely identifying themselves as press. That is a fact. Last week, Simon ordered federal agents squaring off nightly with protesters around the Mark O. Hatfield Federal Courthouse to let people identified as journalists wearing a press pass or clothing with the word press on it and legal observers to do their jobs without subjecting them to the use of force, dispersal orders or arrest. But the federal agencies claim 
the order is unworkable, in part because they say protesters are falsely adopting the insignia of the press. The federal agencies also note in court documents that agents' ability to clearly see and identify journalists is inhibited by their own copious deployment of tear gas. At Friday's hearing, Judge Simon pointed to a video submitted by the government that allegedly shows a protester wearing a helmet with the word press on, bursting through the barrier set up by federal agents and called out to other protesters to join him. I think he said they can't arrest us all. I think he even said that's why we have the Second Amendment. Folks, I sure hope this case is about the First Amendment and not the Second Amendment. Yikes. He added, Simply having press on your helmet might not be the best way to preserve First Amendment rights. Matthew Borden, attorney for the journalists and legal observers, told Simon the temporary restraining order protects his clients from targeted assaults, arrest and dispersal merely for doing their jobs. It doesn't change the fact that anyone is subject to arrest if federal agents have probable cause to believe they have broken the law. The basis for the restraining order is if you are there to do your job, you can do that. This guy, I don't think he gained any get out of jail free card by having press on his helmet. No, what you don't understand is that they will lob fireworks, explosives, they will tear down the fence and then back away. And then when the police move in to arrest them, they'll go, help, help, I'm a journalist being arrested and people will film it. And then videos pop up saying things like journalists are being attacked by the police. Well, what's their solution? They're going to say they can see what the guy's doing. And if I'm wrong, they can arrest and, and, and if it's wrong, they can arrest him. At the end of the day, they still can't identify anyone who used the word press to escape culpability for doing something wrong. Simon said, treating journalists more like legal observers would make the restraining order more workable for the federal agencies. We could redefine journalist to someone who is authorized by the ACLU, Simon said. The ACLU could maintain a list. First of all, there is so much wrong with that. I'm not giving my name to someone to put me on a list. What, what, what happens if that list gets stolen or leaked or I, 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 you could get doxxed? That's a stupid idea. The ACLU could maintain a list of who they're giving vests to and give them appropriate guidance and instructions. And no, I don't need guidance or instruction from a from a far left nonprofit. I know I know how to do journalism. That way we might be able to solve the problem of somebody just putting press on their helmet or their shirt. No, you won't, because the far left activist organization will embolden and empower far leftists and stop real journalists. And then they'll say, that guy's not wearing an ACLU vest. He must not really be a journalist, gonk. And then it turns out that guy's actually the journalist and the far leftist was given the vest because the ACLU is clearly supporting them. Yeah, welcome to the new world. I have said it over and over again. Your morality government is coming. This is another example. The ACLU has overtly supported racist far left white supremacist policy. And I'm using that in the literal sense of the term, telling, fighting on behalf, arguing on behalf of institutions to discriminate against minorities. And I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about the Asian minorities. Yeah. You want to talk about what they claim is white supremacy? The ACLU nails it. Once a very great organization that fought for the rights of individuals under the First Amendment, even when they disagreed. Now they realize the money was just too good. You want to know how this happened? You see, Donald Trump put a moratorium on some travel from some countries. And the ACLU said, you can't do that. It's a violation of civil rights. All of a sudden, they received an influx from far left cultists who were donating like crazy. And then the ACLU tried to defend the Charlottesville uh, uh, event, you know, the organizers and, and giving you know, their right to have the event. This resulted in all of these woke far leftists canceling their subscriptions. Oh, no, the ACLU realized we're losing money from the cult. Well, if we want to keep that sweet, sweet Skrilla, what do we got to do? Bend the knee. And they did. And now the ACLU, along with a bunch of other nonprofits, have gone from freedom, liberal, idea loving you know, people to fringe zealot cultist extremists who support policies that would strip you of your civil rights. And now the ACLU, it's being floated by a judge, will be the arbiter of who gets to be a journalist. Now, I've talked about the New York Times being taken over. We all know our cultural institutions are being dominated by these psychopaths. If a federal judge actually tries to implement this and it's not challenged, I mean, even this is going too far. What happens next will be hilarious, not necessarily in a good way for anybody, but I'm certainly going to laugh because you will end up with news organizations having no ability to actually cover Antifa. Think about it. The ACLU supports them. 
They are on the ground in support of these far leftists. So what happens when a far leftist comes up and says, put me down as a journalist? They go, you got it, buddy. And then what happens when Breitbart, Fox News or any other outlet shows up? They're going to say, you don't count as a journalist. No, you're 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 a propagandist. We're not going to let you have a, you have a vest. And then what? You combine that with morality policing. Then you're only ever going to hear about peaceful protesters. Never again will there be a riot. When Antifa shows up to your house and shatters your window and beats the crap out of you, they're going to be filming only you. And then when the story comes out, they're going to be like, here's a bunch of peaceful demonstrators and this violent homeowner. What happened? They won't show you the truth. They won't show you what's actually going on. We've already seen in the videos, they're screaming, stop filming us, film the police. And they beat and attack the journalists. I know I've experienced it personally. They have physically assaulted me and threatened me over and over again. What happens when only journalists are begging the ACLU for their certification? Please let me be a journalist to cover the riot. OK, but only if you re- only if you agree to show them favorably. It's, it's tacit. It's not going to be overt. They're going to say things like, I don't know. You published a story that accused these people of being rioters, and we think that's fake news. Therefore, you're not a real journalist, so you don't get access. And now the only stories that come out will say peaceful protesters. There could be people beating someone to death in the street, and no one will film it because they'll beat you too. And then all of the approved journalists. Now, I don't think we're there yet, but you can tell why these journalists are starting to freak out, how serious this will be. It may be preliminary. I certainly don't think so. The First Amendment is being torn to shreds. Free speech has been crushed in this country. The Constitution is Swiss cheese as all of these governors institute edict and the cops just say, you got it, buddy, and then go and arrest people trying to run their businesses. What do you think is going on? Do you think it ends here when a judge says a far left cultist organization now has the right to determine who can report the news? Well, there you go. Now, to be fair, they're saying The ACLU will give vests to their approved journalists to maintain that list. And that way, the police know who they can or can't arrest as a real journalist. Do you think the police are going to be like, I'm going to respect the First Amendment and make sure that even if they're not wearing a vest, I won't arrest them? No, the police showed up to McCloskey's house and they seized their guns quite illegally, the attorney general says. The police showed up to Adelis Jim and they arrested the gym owners. Quite illegally, most people, well, I should say many people would uh, believe. I guess, of course, if you believe the governors of their states have a right to issue edict and arrest people without laws being passed, fine. What about in Michigan, Ohio, Texas, where all the same thing happened? I'm sorry, man. Look, there's a lot of cops that refuse to enforce unconstitutional rules, mask laws, you know, gun seizures, things like that. But in these cities, the cops just do whatever it is they're told. And then we still see people on the right defending them for some reason. I'll tell you what I'll see, what we will see happen. The cops in Portland are going to be like, if they're wearing a blue vest, don't, you know, arrest them or, or touch them because they're protected according to a federal order. Anybody else, clear them out, arrest them. These cops, it's not about intent. They're not going to go out there and be like, I got to make sure I protect journalists. No, they're going to go out there and be like, I was told not to touch the blue vest guys. This will mean the far left gets preferred access. Welcome to, to your, your morality government. I've been saying it over and over again. Simon said this measure, uh, this, this was a measure he was merely considering. Let's hope it stays that way. This may or may not be a good idea. Maybe we try it for just two weeks. Then at, the he- then at the hearing, preliminary injunction, you can all tell me whether there are problems with it and whether they are solvable or unsolvable. Borden said that probably wouldn't fly under the First Amendment. The ACLU shouldn't be. I don't think anybody should be trying to say who's a journalist and certainly not my client, Borden said. I don't think they have the resources to do that or the confidence. And it's unclear what sort of protection the ACLU's blue vests actually provide. Despite Simon's restraining order, legal observers at the ACLU and the National Lawyers Guild say federal agents have continued to intentionally target them for, for violence. You know, back in the day during Occupy, I helped out the National Lawyers Guild. They used my footage as evidence to exonerate people who were wrongfully arrested, one guy particularly. And later on, during the Trump era, They stood opposed to other peaceful demonstrators to support the far left. And I asked them, I was like, I was like, hey, how come you guys are only observing for one side, not the other? Shouldn't you be observing for everybody so they can peacefully demonstrate? And they said, no, we're a progressive organization. And I was like, so you don't actually care about anyone's rights. 
You care about supporting your politics. Bingo. The ACLU sends out observers too. The ACLU doesn't care about the rights of the police officers, and they don't care about the rights of right wing groups. They only care about the far left. Why? Because that's who pays the bills. Hey, look, man, even if a bunch of right wing people were, you know, I, I, I used to donate to the ACLU. I'll never do it again. And I told them this. You guys are not for civil liberties. You oppose civil liberties, but they don't care. They got a huge influx of religious cultists. And that's cash in the bank, baby. Bend the knee because the money is just too good to pass up. They, they say, despite Simon's restraining order, legal observers with the ACLU and the National Lawyers Guild have been, uh, have continued to intentionally, they, they say federal agents have continually uh, targeted them. On the very night that Simon issued his restraining order, federal agents shot legal observer Kat Mahoney in the head with a pink paintball as she stood across the street from the federal courthouse observing the protest, according to Mahoney's declaration. Later that same night, Mahoney says a federal officer calmly doused her and three other observers as though they were watering a line of flowers. And federal officers shot another legal observer with a rubber bullet after the restraining order was in place, according to the documents. In that situation, the officer stood four feet from a legal observer wearing a green National Lawyers Guild hat and fired directly at her chest, missing her heart by just a few inches. Yes, I don't like hearing these things, but let me tell you, a green hat is not proper identification for anything. So how do you solve this? Honestly, I have no idea. This problem's been going on for a long time. In fact, during Ferguson, I was wearing a vest that said press on the chest. I didn't have my wallet with me with my press cards. And when I tried walking past a police line, it's actually on the live stream. The cop ripped the press thing off my chest and threw it on the ground and said I wasn't a journalist. I'm like, I have a film crew with me, dude. So you think like some random rioter who, who has a film crew with him? Is not the journalist. You ri- he ripped the pre- press thing off my chest, threw it on the ground. I had to pick it up. Yeah, it's difficult. I get it. But I think it's really absurd when someone's clearly a journalist. How do police properly identify? I don't know. I've been subjected to, I would say, I would argue a violation of my rights. But guess what? You're in an active conflict zone. Don't expect to get preferential treatment. It's impossible. What they're really doing here is trying to jam up the police, because I assure you, when they're standing there with Molotovs, with, with, you know, with explosives being lobbed at them, they're not going, wait, wait, hold on, that guy, oh, he's got a green hat, that means he's good. No, they're being like, we need to clear this out now, they're throwing explosives at us. Anybody who does proper training for this stuff knows exactly what you're supposed to do when you're dealing with conflict. Do not stand in the line of fire, do not stand between the rioters and the police, stand off to the side, and even that may not be enough. You know, entering the fray, there is a risk for you to be hurt. The police cannot, in a split second, make these determinations. Now, they can see a blue vest, sure, but we're talking about a chaotic moment. Tear gas everywhere. People are setting fires, and a figure emerges, a couple figures, and you're like, there's a group of people, they need to disperse. Uh Uh-oh, one of them was wearing a green hat. Well, what happens if someone then wears a green hat? As they already showed, there are, there are Antifa rioters wearing press garb. So how do you properly identify them? I understand the idea of making them wear a vest or something. Many journalists do wear reflective vests. There is no way you can do it. The protesters hide behind journalists on purpose. So this happens. The extremists use human shields on purpose. The guy who got arrested for arson was given the explosive by some unknown individual. They use patsies and human shields so they can continue creating chaos and no one can do anything about it. This is propaganda for them. They want the journalists screaming, how dare you? They want the videos of the journalists being like, yo, F you, man, why am I being attacked? I'll tell you what, man. These journalists who go out and scream and complain that police are are being mean to them. Okay, dude. You, do, you, do you not have any experience with the conflict? You think you're going to get special treatment in, these, in, in, a, in, a hot, in, in a hostile moment, in a hostile environment? You're insane. To think that, first of all, these cops are wearing masks. It probably obst- obstructs their vision a bit. Then you've got people all over in every direction. And you think they're going to be like, hold on there, Bill. I noticed that in that crowd is some dude wearing blue. So all of those people don't fire any weapons in that direction. They talk about the observers getting hit and they always try to make it seem like it was intentional. That's what they're saying. Maybe it is. And that shouldn't be. So if that's the case, the cops should not be doing that. One hundred percent. The cops have no reason to walk straight up to someone in a blue vest and just spray them or whatever. So if that's happening, I'm glad it's being called out. 
Unfortunately, I believe the far left has given up. We've given up too much goodwill to these people. I don't believe them. I don't believe the ACLU. I don't believe their observers. I don't believe the NLG because I've seen them. I've seen them take sides. That's literally what they're there for. So it's very easy then. If you have a big row of anti for throwing bricks and there's one observer, and so the cops are trying to clear it out and the observer gets hit, the observer goes, he was targeting me on purpose. The journalists do the same thing. You are in a conflict. You may get hit. Is there, is there anyone going to the Antifa organizer saying, I just want to make sure you don't attack our journalists? No. And the Antifa people attack the journalists too. So I'll tell you what. How about if you can't take the heat, you get out of the kitchen? But let me tell you where this really brings us to. It brings us to a world of, in my opinion, dumb judges. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but look at this. Judge proposes numbered jerseys for federal agents. Duh, because the police aren't wearing unique codes already. Look, he says, they, they must wear unique codes. Maybe stop getting your news from memes, judge, and start actually looking at what's going on on the ground. Now, perhaps this is the fault of the federal prosecutors or whatever, not the judge himself. If that's the case, well, then with, with respect, I will apologize 100%. The government should be telling the judge, uh, your honor, they're wearing numbers. They've been wearing numbers. But if the judge has no idea what's going on, the judge will issue nonsensical rulings. Now, I'm, I, hopefully this weird giving the ACLU the right to declare journalists thing won't fly under the First Amendment. You know why I'm not super confident? Because let's be real. The Constitution at this point is Swiss cheese. It's, it's it. We, we may as well not have one. You know what, man? There's a Blue Lives Matter group. They want Blue Lives Matter written in New York. And de Blasio said, no. Now he's got he, he's got to be sued. OK, it's a violation of the First Amendment. But how many states have violated a bunch of the amendments? How, like no knock warrants with, um, you know, with uh, plainclothes cops kicking people's doors in. What about cops seizing the weapons of the McCloskeys? Violation of the second, violation of the fifth, violation of the fourth, and violation of the first across the board in, as of this year. So I'm not confident. I think they will absolutely institute more morality government. It's beyond morality policing. They're declaring racism a public health crisis across the board in cities all over this country. The morality government is here. People need to protest, I guess. People need to stand up against this. And also, you need to go out and vote in November. Hopefully, it'll be enough. Hopefully, this will end. We'll see how things play out. Next segment's coming up at, coming up at 4 p.m. over at TimCast.net, and I will see you all then.